Capital continues. We want to welcome Representative Tom Cole, Republican of Oklahoma. Good morning. Thanks very much for being with us. Appreciate your time and patience this morning. Let me begin with the same issues we talked to with Governor, with uh, Senator. I bet he liked the uh, liked the uh, promotion there. That's with, good. With Governor's Congressman good. Jim McGovern, the House of Representatives today <laughs> taking up the Libya issue, whether to continue funding or to cut funding. What's your view? Well, actually, I'm going to vote no on both the resolutions we have. I don't think we should have been there in the first place. So I obviously don't support the sort of McCain carry resolution, but I also don't support the alternative resolution. Uh, look, I think that uh, it's very well intentioned, uh, but at the end of the day, it really does both too much and, and too little. Too much in the sense we really shouldn't be micromanaging uh, you know, what missions the military can do. Congress should set broad objectives uh, and support the military, but uh, when, when we're actually laying out you can refuel, you can do intelligence operations, that's way too much uh, of uh, a level of detail. And it does too little because it really doesn't stop anything. I mean, the reality is uh, uh, we're going to be able to continue pretty much everything that we're doing right Right now, other than predator strikes into Libya, and after shooting 228 tomahawks at them over 100 individual predator strikes, there's not that many targets really left. So, I think the resolution, uh, you know, is designed to make us look like we're doing something, but we're still avoiding the issue. At the end of the day, I think the president's fighting an unauthorized illegal war. Uh, it's not been uh, approved by Congress. It's not been funded by Congress. Uh, we should either support the president. That's a legitimate argument. I think he should have come up here and asked for support, or we should pull the plug. But uh, just allowing this thing to continue, which is what we'll effectively be doing, I think erodes congressional war-making authority, enhances the uh, power of the executive branch inappropriately. Let me have you react to uh, your colleague, Congressman Steve King, Republican of Iowa. He joined us yesterday on the issue of Libya. Here's what he had to say. There are a lot of members of this Congress, Democrats and Republicans, that want to just pull the plug on the funding for Libya. Constitutionally, we can do that. Um, I don't agree with that because we have started an operation in Libya. I'm glad that he pulled our military out of direct engagement of the enemy, with the, ex with the exception of the predators, for example. And we're just flying support missions, refueling and supporting the embargo and the tactical. And we're, we're also helping with our intelligence to select targets for the other NATO um, operations that are going on. But we have an agreement with NATO. We have a NATO treaty. And I don't want to see Congress abrogate a treaty uh, with NATO for the same reasons that I've described about America's resolve. If we demonstrate that we're not a reliable partner, there are a lot of rearrangements in the world that will take place. Eastern Europe will look at this and say, um, you took the missiles out of Poland and the radar out of Czechoslovakia, and now you pulled out of an agreement with NATO in the middle of an operation that's over Libya. America has to be a reliable partner, and I think the United States Congress ought to recognize that, regardless of whether we are of the same party or agree with the President's actions. So, Congressman Tom Cole, how do you respond to your Republican colleague? Well, I have enormous respect for Steve. He's a, a good friend and a classmate. We were elected together. I disagree with him in this case. I mean, first of all, you have to go back to the basis of why are we there. The United States wasn't attacked. No member of NATO was attacked. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi is a terrible guy. Uh, you know, he, he undoubtedly has committed multiple atrocities in his own country. But the reality is, uh, since 2003, he's turned over his weapons grade material to us. He's not allowed Al Qaeda to operate with impunity within his territory. Uh, if you're going to, uh, you know, decide you're going to take him out because he's a bad guy, I guess Syria's next because Assad's a really bad guy. So, uh, you know, why we got into this is a mystery, I think, to everybody. Uh, the reality is, my personal view view is we just decided we wanted to be on the side of the Arab street or the Arab uprising someplace. We weren't going to do it in a lot of places. Gaddafi, we thought, was going to fall pretty quickly. Uh, it turned out that he actually has an army that, uh, even after we've pounded it, is, is willing to fight for him at some level. He's got a measure of popular support. And the rebels that uh, we've uh, allied with aren't strong enough to, to bring this thing to a successful conclusion. So I just don't think it's been well thought through. And uh, it's true there is a NATO operation underway, but uh, again, the alliance wasn't created 
simply to uh, you know police the the world. It was it was created to protect its members. It's one thing actually for NATO to be in Afghanistan. The United States was attacked from Afghanistan. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense in my in my view for us to be in Libya. You know, unless you're going to intervene politically in a lot of other places. As a member of the Budget Committee, I want to ask you about uh, the budget talks and also sure. Afghanistan. But Louise has been patient from Savannah, Missouri, <laughs> Republican line with Congressman Tom Cole. Good morning. Thanks for waiting. Uh, good morning, sir. How are you? Very good. Um, you know, I'm very concerned about my country, and um, all I see is a president who's continuously making end runs around Congress. I do not appreciate the fact that he has drug us into Libya without the consent of Congress. And I don't know if you're aware of it, sir, but... Samantha Powers, uh, one of Obama's national security advisors, has made past comments about using NATO forces to go in against Israel in defense of the Palestinians. Now, if you guys aren't going to hold President Obama accountable for dragging us into a war without consent, what will you do if he does this in August or September and he uses NATO forces to go in to Israel? Well, first of all, I agree very much with your comments about Libya, and I think Congress has been remiss here. Uh, you know, we've allowed the president uh, to <coughs> wage uh, an unauthorized war. There's not a line item in the defense budget about this. We're robbing Peter to pay Paul. No cost estimates, no congressional action, and we're allowing the president to continue. That's why I don't intend to support either of these resolutions today. Uh, in terms of the president using NATO forces in Israel, I'm not aware of the comments that uh, you referred to, but uh, I, I I would oppose that, but frankly, I think it's unlikely that that would happen. I don't think NATO has much of an appetite uh, to do it. Frankly, NATO's having a pretty big problem uh, dealing with a country of six and a half million uh, that has nowhere near the capabilities of, uh, of Israel. So uh, I, I don't think that will occur. I certainly would oppose it if it did. Tom Cole represents uh, Oklahoma's 4th Congressional District, which includes Norman and Lawton, Oklahoma. Rebecca is joining us. Fort Worth, Texas, our line for Democrats. Go ahead, please. Oh, I'm glad to see and hear that the Republicans are now against going into uh, Libya and are also wanting us to get out of Afghanistan. And and remember, what uh, what authorization did uh, Bush have, uh, President Bush, have to go into Iraq, which has cost us a fortune? And now the Republicans are so concerned about our deficit. What happened all the eight years that Bush was in in in, uh, in as a president? And the Republicans were running the country, and they had they were spending money as if it was their money. They were spending our taxpayers' money, and now you're so concerned about a deficit, and you're trying to uh, 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 clear the deficit on the backs of people who are losing their jobs, losing their homes, and now you don't you still want to keep the tax cuts for the rich and give the corporate America and all the banks, uh, you know, all the all all the loopholes that they have. I think of the American people, just like one of the callers called earlier, you, the Republicans are, are destroying our country, and we're not as stupid as you think we are. Okay, let me stop you there. Rebecca from Fort Worth, Texas. Well, there's Congress a lot Nicole. to respond to there, so I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can. Um, you know, look, I, I don't see the Libyan question as deficit-related. Uh, I just think uh, if we go to war, we ought to authorize it by Congress. The reality is, whether you agree with Iraq or not, uh, it was authorized. So was Afghanistan. Bush went to the Congress of the United States, asked for war-making authority on both instances, and got it, just as his father did the same thing back in, in, the, uh, in the Gulf War. Uh, I think that's the right way to do things. I don't think that's what we've done in Libya at all. As a matter of fact, we've engaged in a game of semantics trying to say we're not involved in hostilities at a country that we've launched, you know, again, 200 and some odd uh, tomahawks and 100 predators. I think if you're at the receiving end of that, you assume you're in a hostile situation. Uh, so I just disagree fundamentally uh, with what the president's done and how he's gone about it. And I, I disagree, including uh, with my party, uh, that we've not held him accountable in the way that I think that we should. Uh, in terms of uh, deficit spending, you know, for what it's worth, the deficit was $167 billion when there, the last Republican Congress uh, left office in 2006. Uh, you know, that's uh, too big a, 
a deficit, but it's not one and a half trillion dollars the way it is now. We've ramped up discretionary spending uh, very rapidly. We've put off dealing with the entitlement situations. I think we're approaching a debt crisis. The Republicans have put their ideas on the table. What we haven't had from the Democrats, quite frankly, is counterproposals. The last Democratic Congress didn't even write a budget for uh, 2011. We had to do that. We got there. They didn't pass appropriations bills. Uh, they haven't put any proposals for dealing with the entitlement on the uh, table. The president's own budget was rejected by the Senate 97 to 0, which means it got no Democratic votes in a body controlled by Democrats. So I think uh, there's been a lot of bob and weave on both sides, but honestly, more on the Democratic side. Time for us to have a national debate and dialogue, put some concrete proposals on the on the table and move ahead. I think that's what Republicans are trying to do. I hope that's what the president and Democrats will do. Political question is the former chair of the NRCC between 2006 and 2008. As you look ahead at 2012 for the House of Representatives, will the Republicans gain or lose seats? I think we'll hold the majority. You know, whether we'll gain or lose is a little bit early in the cycle, but no president has shifted control of a House in a reelection campaign since Harry Truman in 1948. This is the largest Republican majority since 1947. Uh, you know, I expect this to be a closer presidential election, honestly, than we had in 2008. Uh, the president had everything going for him in terms of right track, wrong track numbers. Bush had a 30 percent favorable. There's a financial crisis on the Bush watch. All those things fed together. And Republicans still, John McCain still got over 170 electoral votes and 46 percent of the votes. So I'm actually expecting a very competitive election cycle presidentially. Within that context, I think we basically have a sort of a status quo type election. I mean, Democrats have a lot of opportunities to play offense, but this is a pretty good class of uh, freshmen. Uh, I think uh, the committee, the NRCC, under Chairman Sessions, is very well prepared, uh, and uh, we'll have some offensive opportunities of our own. There are some Democrats, uh, either through redistricting or retirement, that are available. So my guess is it's, uh, it's, it's pretty close to what it is now that we, again, hold the majority and run a close presidential race. I think we've got a great shot to take the U.S. Senate. So I'm, you know, honestly looking forward to, to the 2012 election a lot more than I was looking forward to the 2008 election. But if you could, looking at it objectively, do you think that the Republicans could lose some House seats? In oh, yeah, House? absolutely. I mean, normally after you have a, a big gain like this, the, you recede somewhat. Uh, and, uh, you know, for instance, in the 94 class, uh, the really uh, neat election was 96. We lost eight seats in that, but that was actually the first Republican majority that had been reelected since 1928. Uh, but we did lose seats in, in um, 96. We lost seats in 98, uh, five then, and we actually lost one seat in 2000. So enormous gains, you know, sometimes then you, you sort of settle back to a more realistic number. That's certainly possible in this case. Uh, but uh, again, I think uh, holding the majority, I think, I think we're very unlikely to lose the majority. Keith is joining us, Palm Bay, Florida, Republican line with uh, Congressman Tom Cole. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for your service and all the young sung heroes that are dying for uh, trying to protect this great country. Um, can I ask a question first? Surely. Uh, sir, do you know who the first casualty of war was in Afghanistan? No, not by name, I don't. His name was John Michael Spann. He was a uh, contractor for the CIA. He was questioning Taliban in a prison, Bakram prison. Uh, our military took that country in like two weeks without a casualty. He was a John Walker Lind, and them did the riot in the prison. John Walker Lind's about to get out of prison. Uh, we are so schizophrenic about this. We need to go back to the art of war by Sung Soon. We need to go back to the P Colin Powell doctrine. I don't believe we even need troops on the ground anymore. We have B-2 bombers. This slow thing of the predators killing people in Waziristan, and we have to apologize every other day for, for civilian casualties. We need to start leveling these governments the first day and apologize for the civilians that day and then let them rebuild their own country. Thank you, get... Keith. We'll get a response. Uh, well, you know, actually, I would disagree respectfully in terms of there are times when you do need troops <laughs> on the ground. 
uh, as Secretary Gates and, frankly, Secretary Clinton said at the outset, before the administration was consented, uh, was committed to uh, uh, Libya, a no-fly zone usually doesn't bring down a government. We did that uh, in Iraq for many years. Saddam Hussein uh, managed to hold power. Same thing uh, in uh, in Libya, obviously, the no-fly zone, even the active use of forces to, uh, from the air to engage uh, Libyan forces on the ground has so far not broken that regime. And, and again, this isn't a major military power. This country is six and a half million people uh, in a desert. Uh, uh, so it's um, uh, it's not something that you need to worry about militarily. Uh, so there are times when you need to put troops on the ground. But in terms of being careful about our involvement, I think that's that's accurate. Uh, you make an interesting point about Afghanistan. I mean, uh, you know, what's often said it's a 10-year war, and it certainly is. But the first five years, there were fewer than 160 American deaths associated with Afghanistan. It was actually looked pretty successful for a long period of time. Uh, it's certainly much tougher now because the, that death total over the 10-year period is up to about 1,500. On the other hand, you have to remember we were attacked from Afghanistan. We have an interest in somebody being able to control the territory. Uh, we've been more successful there than people acknowledge. Uh, you know, Al-Qaeda is pretty much destroyed in Afghanistan. Uh, Osama bin Laden killed. Uh, the reality is that the Taliban doesn't control the country. They control parts of the country. So we, we've not seen terrorism reconstitute itself. Uh, on the ground, there's seven times as many uh, uh, people in school. Uh, it's up from a million to over seven million. The economy is actually better. Uh, the guy, there is an enormous corruption problem, no question about that, enormous drug-related problem. Uh, but Afghanistan's better off. Now, uh, the real question, I think the challenge for the president and for the Congress going forward is everybody wants to draw down. Uh, how quickly do you do it? Look, I give the president a lot of credit. He made some tough political decisions on Afghanistan when he arrived. He tripled the number of troops. He fired two generals. He changed the nature of the mission. Uh, but he also uh, said very clearly that we weren't going to be there for forever, that you know, we were going to accomplish some things, we were going to stand up the Afghans. Um, you know, honestly, he's, he's kept to his promises. And we can debate about whether this drawdown is not fast enough, which some people think, or maybe too fast, maybe running the risk of some fragile gains. I'd probably lean in that direction. But it fits within the parameters of what the president told us he was going to do. And I think you have to, uh, to recognize that. And uh, you have to recognize we do have a long-term security interest. We've uh, been in Afghanistan before. We were heavily involved there indirectly, but heavily involved when the Soviet Union had it. And we left. We saw what happened when we left completely. It's sort of like the lesson we had to learn after the First World War. We got out of Europe. We were back 20 years later fighting the same people. We stayed continuously engaged in Europe. America has been a lot more secure because we have. Uh, you know, I think uh, we don't need the level of engagement today indefinitely, but we're going to be in Afghanistan probably for a long time. We have less than a minute left. Let me just ask you quickly about the budget negotiations. What happens next? You know, it's going to be, well, I think we've got it down to the principles now. Look, this is going to be a, a, a President Obama, Speaker Boehner, and uh, uh, Majority Leader uh, Reid decision. It's time for them to get around and uh, that negotiate something. We'll see what it is and uh, vote accordingly. Republican Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. We promise we'll have you on much longer next time. <laughs> That's back. fine. Appreciate it. And to your uh, callers, thanks for being patient. We appreciate that as well with our technical difficulties earlier in the program. We're going to take you to the floor of the House of Representatives and a reminder.